You might look at a huge and a complicated 3D environment like this and think to yourself, there is no way in hell my computer would be able to handle creating something like this in 3D using software such as Blender, Maya or Max. And you would be right. But there is actually a trick that allows you to do this and this is what professionals use to make huge CGI environments and digital film sets. Also video game developers when designing game levels and architects when working on big environments with lots of nature assets that can easily increase poly counts to hundreds of millions. So what is this simple trick and why it is so effective? This simple trick is actually called using a proxy. And proxies in 3D software are simplified versions of complex 3D models which are used to improve performance during the modeling, design, animation, and rendering stages. And to simplify it for you, I would say they are low detail representations of complex 3D models to reduce computational load, enabling a smoother workflow particularly when dealing with large scenes or high-poly 3D models. And the real reason they are important is that proxies help maintain responsiveness in the viewport because every minute waiting for the computer to respond is time that could be spent productively elsewhere, if you know what I mean. For instance, in software like Blender, Maya and Max, proxies are employed to replace high-poly models in the working environment, only to load the full model when necessary such as during rendering. This allows you as an artist to manipulate scenes more effectively without overloading your hardware. And there are actually two ways to create these proxies. They can be manually created by reducing the number of polygons in the model or automatically generated within the software. And if you ever heard about proxies before, then you realize how important they are in creating any big project that was ever created. So let's see where they are actually used in a practical manner. In visual facts, scenes can include high poly models, detailed environments, or complex simulations like particle effects, all of which are resource intensive. So proxies provide a low resolution version of these assets, which helps a lot as you can imagine. One key example is when dealing with crowd simulations, when hundreds of thousands of individual characters need to be animated and rendered. And as you can expect, using full detailed models for each character in real time would be overwhelming to say the least for the most systems. No matter how advanced it is, leading to a lag or crashes. Instead, the smart thing to do is using proxy versions of the characters, which are drastically reduced in detail to be able to animate, position, and block out the scene. And when it comes to time for rendering, the high resolution models replace the proxies ensuring the final output looks detailed and polished. Another example is large-scale environments as I said in the beginning, such as cityscapes or forest scenes in movies like The Avengers Endgame or Lord of the Rings. These environments consist of numerous high-detail assets such as buildings, trees or vehicles. And using proxies allows VFX artists to move around and manipulate these scenes fluidly. Still in visual effects, and specifically in fluid or particle simulations, proxies are also used to represent complex physics simulations in the viewport, because clearly you are not using the final version of these particles to shape your sims. So these proxies allow you as an artist to preview and adjust the overall movement or the behavior of elements like water or explosions without processing the full simulation every time. This results in a smoother workflow and faster iteration times. Films like Avatar, The Jungle Book, and The Lion King relied heavily on complex 3D environments and characters, many of which contain millions of polygons, and proxies allow these heavy assets to be represented in a simplified form during the production phase making it possible for the visual effects team to manage and animate scenes efficiently without crashing their software or overwhelm their machines. For example, in Avatar, entire alien worlds were created in dense vegetation, towering rock formations, and detailed alien creatures as you can see. And I choose to believe that these assets would be impossible to manipulate in real time 
without causing significant performance issues. On the other hand, by using proxies, the team could place an animate low resolution versions of the Navi's characters in addition to their environments, and only when rendering would the high polygon models be loaded into the final output. In the Jungle Book and the Lion King, most of the characters and environments were completely computer generated as you can see, and the VFX artists used proxies for animals like lions, tigers, and other creatures to adjust animations or blackout shots without overloading their computers. If you think about it, animals of that complexity for a feature film can easily be a couple million polygons each. And these proxies enable directors to review scenes, make changes, and preview animations in real time without waiting for the full resolution assets to be loaded. In addition, when combining live action and CGI, proxies allow filmmakers to plan out the placement of digital objects in a scene. For example, in the Jungle Book, the young actor playing Mowgli interacted with the virtual world made of CGI animals and environments using proxies help the team visualize where these elements would appear, ensuring camera angles and movement before rendering the full high detailed versions during post-production. On the other hand, game developers use proxies during the level design phase primarily to improve performance and workflow efficiency, especially when reiterating on level designs. And by the way, this also has a popular name which goes by grayscaling or grayboxing. This phase involves creating the layout, environment, and gameplay mechanics of a game level, which can become resource intensive due to the number of assets involved, and proxies allow game designers to substitute detailed models with simplified versions, as you can see in the video, which significantly reduces the computational load on the system, and this is especially the case if you don't have a very strong machine. This is crucial because game environments can be vast, often filled with complex assets like buildings, trees, vehicles, and characters that would slow down the real-time interactions if used at full scale. I mean all the details. And mind you, during the level design, game developers need to constantly navigate, test, and iterate on various aspects of the game world. And I would say proxies are really important because they need feedback instantly, and they need everything to be responsive, making it easier to move around, edit and adjust object placement without waiting for the game engine to respond, which can be tiresome to be honest, and boring as well. And this is even more important for creating open world games or large scale levels where thousands of assets need to be managed. And just like in 3D software, if every asset were rendered in full detail, the game engine would struggle to provide smooth real-time feedback, leading to long delays and sluggish performance. And proxies, as you may expect, allow these developers to focus on the gameplay and design elements rather than getting bogged down by the technical performance issues. In architectural visualization, Proxies are also important when working on large-scale projects like skyscrapes, urban landscapes, or sprawling developments. And these projects often include an extensive array of repetitive elements such as furniture, trees, vehicles, people, and lighting fixtures. And using high-poly models for each of these elements will result in a significant performance issue, just like in other cases that we spoke about, and the 3D software would struggle to render these scenes in real time, making adjustments slow and insufficient as you can expect. And I would say proxies are not only needed but they are must, especially on large scenes with lots of vegetation elements like grass and different plants and trees. And you know what I mean if you did something like this. So at the end, I hope this helped you get a general idea about proxies and where they are used and how they are a lifesaver, especially on big projects. And there you have it guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe to the channel to receive more videos like this. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.